Well, good morning. I um, have a hard time believing that it is the last week of 2021. And uh, it just seems like the time goes faster and faster um, as we um, close out the year. Um, I'm continuing to lead you through on some thoughts in um, the Sermon on the Mount. And in chapter 6, uh, in verse 24, the Lord says a pretty profound thought to the people. I, I, I find it com very profound and so applicable to our world, like uh, nothing's changed. He had just told them that, you know, you're the, the eye is the lamp of the body to be full of light. And then he talks about the contrast between the light and, and darkness. And, uh, you know, what, what, what are you allowing in? And are you healthy? And, and then he, he says in verse number 24, he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And that's a very powerful statement that should speak into our lives. Uh, we know in, in, in the workplace, it's pretty difficult to have more than one boss. <laughs> Uh, because you don't know who you're taking directions from and who to receive correction from. Uh, in the ancient world, he was saying, you know, where uh, the Roman Empire, most people were slaves. And he's saying, you can't have two masters. Uh, you can't have two people ruling over your life. In the Christian context, as believers... Do we understand that to entrust ourselves to Jesus assumes the Lordship of Christ? That we recognize that he is Lord, that he's our master, that we have one ultimate authority to rule over us, that he planted his life in us so that he could live through us, that we would recognize, as Paul says, that we were bought with a price. Um, he says over and over again that we are servants and we're friends and we're children. But as servants, we can't expect a different treatment than our master. And so to think that somehow um, that you can be saved and be a child of God and then live completely independent as though you were <clears throat> your own master seems to be in a serious conflict with what the scripture says. Uh, we don't gain or earn salvation uh, by making him Lord. We can't make him Lord. He is Lord. But when we entrust ourselves to him for our salvation, for eternal life, uh, we are uh, accepting that he is the one who has the right to rule and reign over our lives. And I think this is in conflict with the way most Christians think. Uh, most professing Christians um, really live in some respects as functional atheists. By that I mean, it's not that they don't believe in God or that they believe there is a God, but they really function as though they're the masters of their own lives. They do what they want to do. They go where they want to go. They give what they want to give. I mean, they, they are the functional masters of their life. And it's not that they may not send up a prayer or two to God or ask God to bail them out of help, but they're functioning as the masters of life. And Jesus says, listen, you can't serve two 
masters. You're either going to hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. And then he tells us what those two are. He says, you cannot serve God and money. So let's ask as we wrap up this year with some reflection. Who, what am I devoted to? Who, what am I serving? Who, what has my love, my passion, my attention? He says, you can serve God or you can serve money, but not both. I think this is why John in his epistle says, you know, love not the world or the things of the world. Because when we love the world, we end up despising God's rule and reign in our lives. And friends, money can be a wonderful tool for accomplishing his eternal purposes, advancing the kingdom of God. Every, every good bit of missions work I've been able to do is because someone worked and gave. It's not that we don't work and it's not that we don't uh, make money. We don't serve it. We don't allow our hearts to be fixed to it. We don't, um, we, we must refuse to allow ourselves to be entrapped in the affairs of this world. And so, as we get ready for a new year, let's, let's really focus on the love, the devotion, the heart that we want to foster and allow His Spirit to foster in us and through us. And how Ask him to help us to be really clear if we're being distracted, if our heart's divided and we're trying to serve two masters. For he, he is to be preeminent, not prominent, preeminent in all. Well, I hope this uh, encourages you, challenges you, and as you get ready for a new year, let this ponder in your heart because you have one master, one lover, Jesus. Have a great day.